So for my 500th video, I think it's time for a topic which is close to my heart, or rather, I should say, close to my head. That is boldness. Why do humans, and especially males, go bold? The hair loss generally follows one or more of three distinctive patterns. A receding hairline, where basically the front edge of the hair goes further and further back along the skull. Hair loss from the crown or the top of the head. And finally, a general thinning of the hairs on the head. However, those basic patterns do get a little bit more complicated. The receding hairline doesn't all retreat at the same speed. Instead, the edges of the, of the line retreat faster than the middle, leaving behind what's known as a widow's peak, or a V-like formation in the hair. Additionally, hair loss isn't lost in patches or clumps. Instead, the hair loss for a particular area is even and uniform, and spreads onwards from the original point of loss. These patterns of hair loss are then very consistent and predictable to point away from any kind of disease or external chemical reaction, instead towards a biological or a genetic source for this hair loss. To find out more, I have to take a closer look at head hair itself. The hairs on the head are significantly different from others on the human body. The most easily observed difference being that they grow substantially longer than other hairs on the body. So it indicates they have some other function other than just purely keeping the head warm, like for a social display. Another difference, which is hard to discern, is that each hair follicle or pore where the hair emerges from the skin can have anywhere up to five different hairs growing out of them. And one of the first steps in going bold so these hair follicles, rather than producing their normal multiple hairs, they only produce a single strand of hair. This results in general thickness and volume of the hair being lost in the affected area. Now, once this process has happened in a particular area, those remaining hair strands then become thinner and thinner. As a result, they're weaker, prone to damage, so it'll break if they come too long. So if long people do have hairs on the head, just they're too short and too thin to be really noticeable. An interesting part of this hair loss is that if a hair follicle, say from the, the back of the head, where hair loss rarely happens, is transplanted to an area of hair loss, it then rapidly undergoes the same loss of hairs and thinning. Now there are two biological components to this hair loss. Firstly, in your DNA, either directly in the or pre-programmed to go bald at a certain time in life, or you have a gene which can result in that boldness being switched on by certain environmental factors. The other biological component is dihydrotestosterone. Now this hormone plays a significant part in the early formation of male genitals. However, later in life your body still can produce this hormone, and it's the head hairs that react to this hormone and gradually going bold. Now, in women, it's the declining levels of estrogen which normally counterbalances this supposedly male hormone that can result in boldness. So if that's how, what about why? Well, hair colour and length play a major role in many animals, noting things like status and sexual maturity. A lion's mane and the silver colour of a mountain gorilla are prime examples of this. Even in human males, the growth of the beard denotes sexual maturity, so it's likely that hair length and thickness have a similar role. Though hair loss for men can happen at virtually any age, the majority of men are tending to lose some of their hair by the mid-thirties. It's generally too late to have a large role in reproduction, but maybe an easy way to differentiate between the wilder, younger adults and the more mature members of a group or tribe. It may mean that bald men are more likely to be seen as tribal leaders or elders as well as father figures helping to raise children. It is however possible with a link to dihydrotestosterone, rather than bald men becoming more virile than others, it's just an indication that they actually are capable of fathering children. So that's boldness. Just a quick look at an interesting topic.